What's up guys? This is Matt Watson coming to you from the camper van that he called Mo. And this week I'm going to show you how my dad and I created a cabinet that can house all of these essentials inside my wonderful kitchen. So if you can't take the heat, guys, get out of this video. What's comedy? What? You got some comedy? Huh? You want a comedy? It's Matt! What's in comedy? What was most challenging about this structure is all of the essentials that need to fit beneath it. It's the hub for the entire van. It needs to hold everything but the kitchen sink and also a kitchen sink. So this kitchen cabinet needs to hold two containers that hold six gallons of water each. Uh, for my fellow Canucks out there, you can get them at Canadian Tire for 20 bucks. I also have a mini fridge, which I stole from my brother. Um, he was putting nothing but Pepsi in it. So I think I've actually done him a favor. Um, this container is what's gonna house my gray water that's gonna come through the sink. And finally, it's also gotta hold my two batteries, which is going to be powering the rest of the van. So we built the structure out of two by fours and then built a box to put underneath the fridge to race it up about an inch and a half so it would clear a little lip in the back corner of the van. That way it'll sit more flush to the back wall, giving the living space a little bit more room. Um, being this entire structure was built to house this fridge and this fridge alone, it's gonna be a big pain in the butt if it ever needs to be replaced. But in the meantime, it fits like a glove. If your glove was a kitchen cabinet and your fingers were this particular fridge. The two cabinet doors are made out of the thinnest tongue and groove pine that I could find. Um, we use that along with a plywood behind it to uh, hold it together and give it some extra strength and then use that same tongue and groove pine to add facing around the cabinet to give it a really nice finish. The scariest part about assembling the cabinet doors was trying to pre-drill a hole for the screw to go in without piercing through uh, the front finish of the tongue and groove. Uh, but once we got those together, we applied a stopper for the inside cabinet door and then threw the hinges on and got the whole cabinet finished. I took a set of hinges, which I hope I have enough now to cover the entire van, and spray painted the matte black. This way, the entire van will match and will make the whole thing look very copacetic. The hardest part about these cabinet doors was attaching them to the hinge and then to the cabinet itself. Man, those things are more temperamental than I expected them to be. I ended up splitting the wood, putting them in the wrong places. They were dragging on the ground. It took some re-screwing, some re-cutting, but finally we got them both in and I am thrilled with how they look. This entire kitchenette looks absolutely adorable. Now all it needs is a countertop. Ideally, I wanted that to be just one big piece of wood with a live edge, but that it would involve finding a pulp mill that's able to create that kind of slab. Luckily, Thanks to Facebook Marketplace, such a place existed just nearby. Because this lovely lumber was just cut, it's going to need at least a month of bathing in the sun to remove all of the moisture. But I couldn't resist and threw it on top of the countertop to see how it looks, and I could not be more thrilled. It's official. This van is now home to one hunky maple Canadian. And this piece of wood, too. Come on, Dave. Hey, guys, as always, by watching this video, you already support me. So thank you so much for doing that. If you want to go a little bit extra, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell a friend. Check this guy out. He knows how to build a cabinet. Um, I need to wait for all the moisture to get out of this lovely slab of wood before I can put a sink in it. So stay tuned for that in a future episode. But that is it for this one. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you next week.